Chapter Twelve of Bel Ami, or the History of a Scoundrel. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Martin Geeson. Bel Ami, or the History of a Scoundrel, by Guy de Maupassant. Translator unknown. Chapter Twelve, a meeting and the result. The July sun shone upon the Place de la Trinité, which was almost deserted. Duroy drew out his watch. It was only three o'clock. He was half an hour too early. He laughed as he thought of the place of meeting. He entered the sacred edifice of la Trinité. The coolness within was refreshing. Here and there an old woman kneeled at prayer, her face in her hands. Duroy looked at his watch again. It was not yet a quarter past three. He took a seat, regretting that he could not smoke. At the end of the church, near the choir, he could hear the measured tread of a corpulent man, whom he had noticed when he entered. Suddenly the rustle of a gown made him start. It was she. He arose and advanced quickly. She did not offer him her hand, and whispered, I have only a few minutes. You must kneel near me so that no one will notice us." She proceeded to a side aisle, after saluting the host on the high altar, took a footstool, and kneeled down. Georges took one beside it, and when they were in the attitude of prayer, he said, "'Thank you, thank you, I adore you. I should like to tell you constantly how I began to love you, how I was conquered the first time I saw you. Will you permit me some day to unburden my heart, to explain all to you?" She replied between her fingers, "'I am mad to let you speak to me thus, mad to have come hither, mad to do as I have done to let you believe that this this adventure can have any results forget it and never speak to me of it again she paused he replied i expect nothing i hope nothing i love you whatever you may do i will repeat it so often with so much force and ardour that you will finally understand me and reply i love you too he felt her frame tremble as she involuntarily repeated i love you too he was overcome by astonishment oh my god she continued incoherently should i say that to you i feel guilty despicable i who have two daughters but i cannot cannot i never thought it was stronger than i listen listen i have never loved any other but you i swear it i have loved you a year in secret i have suffered and struggled I can no longer. I love you." She wept, and her bowed form was shaken by the violence of her emotion. Georges murmured, "'Give me your hand that I may touch, may press it.' She slowly took her hand from her face. He seized it, saying, "'I should like to drink your tears.' placing the hand he held upon his heart, he asked, Do you feel it beat? In a few moments the man Georges had noticed before passed by them. 
when madame walter heard him near her she snatched her fingers from georges clasp and covered her face with them after the man had disappeared duroy asked hoping for another place of meeting than la trinite where shall i see you to-morrow she did not reply she seemed transformed into a statue of prayer he continued shall i meet you to-morrow at parc monceau she turned a livid face toward him and said unsteadily leave me leave me now go go away for only five minutes i suffer too much near you i want to pray go let me pray alone five minutes let me ask god to pardon me to save me leave me five minutes she looked so pitiful that he rose without a word and asked with some hesitation shall i return presently she nodded her head in the affirmative and he left her she tried to pray she closed her eyes in order not to see georges she could not pray she could only think of him she would rather have died than have fallen thus she had never been weak she murmured several words of supplication she knew that all was over but the struggle was in vain she did not however wish to yield but she felt her weakness someone approached with a rapid step she turned her head it was a priest she rose ran toward him and clasping her hands she cried save me save me he stopped in surprise what do you want madame i want you to save me have pity on me if you do not help me i am lost he gazed at her wondering if she were mad what can i do for you the priest was a young man somewhat inclined to corpulence receive my confession said she and counsel me sustain me tell me what to do he replied i confess every saturday from three to six seizing his arm she repeated no now at once at once it is necessary he is here in this church he is waiting for me the priest asked who is waiting for you a man who will be my ruin if you do not save me i can no longer escape him i am too weak too weak she fell upon her knees sobbing oh father have pity upon me save me for god's sake save me she seized his gown that he might not escape her while he uneasily glanced around on all sides to see if any one noticed the woman at his feet finally seeing that he could not free himself from her he said rise i have the key to the confessional with me duroy having walked around the choir was sauntering down the nave when he met the stout bold man wandering about and he wondered what can he be doing here the man slackened his pace and looked at georges with the evident desire to speak to him when he was near him he bowed and said politely i beg your pardon sir for disturbing you but can you tell me when this church was built duroy replied i do not know i think it is twenty or twenty-five years it is the first time i have been here i have never seen it before 
feeling interested in the stranger the journalist continued it seems to me that you are examining into it very carefully the man replied i am not visiting the church i have an appointment he paused and in a few moments added it is very warm outside duroy looked at him and suddenly thought that he resembled forestier are you from the provinces he asked yes i am from rennes and did you sir enter this church from curiosity no i am waiting for a lady and with a smile upon his lips he walked away he did not find madame walter in the place in which he had left her and was surprised she had gone he was furious then he thought she might be looking for him and he walked around the church not finding her he returned and seated himself on the chair she had occupied hoping that she would rejoin him there soon he heard the sound of a voice he saw no one whence came it he rose to examine into it and saw in a chapel near by the doors of the confessionals he drew nearer in order to see the woman whose voice he heard he recognized madame walter she was confessing at first he felt a desire to seize her by the arm and drag her away then he seated himself near by and bided his time he waited quite a while at length madame walter rose turned saw him and came toward him her face was cold and severe sir said she i beseech you not to accompany me not to follow me and not to come to my house alone you will not be admitted adieu and she walked away in a dignified manner he permitted her to go because it was against his principles to force matters as the priest in his turn issued from the confessional he advanced toward him and said if you did not wear a gown i would give you a sound thrashing then he turned upon his heel and left the church whistling in the doorway he met the stout gentleman when duroy passed him they bowed the journalist then repaired to the office of la vie francaise as he entered he saw by the clerk's busy air that something of importance was going on and he hastened to the manager's room the latter exclaimed joyfully as duroy entered what luck here is bel ami he stopped in confusion and apologized i beg your pardon i am very much bothered by circumstances and then i hear my wife and daughter call you bel ami from morning until night and i have acquired the habit myself are you displeased georges laughed not at all Monsieur walter continued very well then i will call you bel ami as every one else does great changes have taken place the ministry has been overthrown marot is to form a new cabinet he has chosen general boutin d'acre as minister of war and our friend la roche mathieu as minister of foreign affairs we shall all be very busy i must write a leading article a simple declaration of principles then i must have something interesting on the morocco question you must attend to that duroy reflected a moment and then replied 
i have it i will give you an article on the political situation of our african colony and he proceeded to prepare m walter an outline of his work which was nothing but a modification of his first article on souvenirs of a soldier in africa the manager having read the article said it is perfect you are a treasure many thanks duroy returned home to dinner delighted with his day notwithstanding his failure at la trinite his wife was awaiting him anxiously she exclaimed on seeing him you know that laroche is minister of foreign affairs yes i have just written an article on that subject how do you remember the first article we wrote on souvenirs of a soldier in africa well i revised and corrected it for the occasion she smiled ah yes that will do very well at that moment the servant entered with a dispatch containing these words without any signature i was beside myself pardon me and come to-morrow at four o'clock to parc monceau he understood the message and with a joyful heart slipped the telegram into his pocket during dinner he repeated the words to himself as he interpreted them they meant i yield i am yours where and when you will he laughed madeleine asked what is it nothing much i was thinking of a comical old priest i met a short while since duroy arrived at the appointed hour the following day the benches were all occupied by people trying to escape from the heat and by nurses with their charges he found madame walter in a little antique ruin she seemed unhappy and anxious when he had greeted her she said how many people there are in the garden he took advantage of the occasion yes that is true shall we go somewhere else where it matters not where for a drive for instance you can lower the shade on your side and you will be well concealed yes i should like that better i shall die of fear here very well meet me in five minutes at the gate which opens on the boulevard i will fetch a cab when they were seated in the cab she asked where did you tell the coachman to drive to georges replied do not worry he knows he had given the man his address on the rue de constantinople madame walter said to duroy you cannot imagine how i suffer on your account how i am tormented tortured yesterday i was harsh but i wanted to escape you at any price i was afraid to remain alone with you have you forgiven me he pressed her hand yes yes why should i not forgive you loving you as i do she looked at him with a beseeching air listen you must promise to respect me otherwise i could never see you again at first he did not reply a smile lurked beneath his moustache then he murmured i am your slave she told him how she had discovered that she loved him on learning that he was to marry madeleine forestier suddenly she ceased speaking the carriage stopped duroy opened the door where are we she asked he replied alight and enter the house we shall be undisturbed there where are we she repeated 
at my rooms they are my bachelor apartments which i have rented for a few days that we might have a corner in which to meet she clung to the cab startled at the thought of a tete-a-tete -tete, and stammered no no i do not want to he said firmly i swear to respect you come you see that people are looking at us that a crowd is gathering around us make haste and he repeated i swear to respect you she was terror-stricken and rushed into the house she was about to ascend the stairs he seized her arm it is here on the ground floor when he had closed the door he showered kisses upon her neck her eyes her lips in spite of herself she submitted to his caresses and even returned them hiding her face and murmuring in broken accents i swear that i have never had a lover while he thought that is a matter of indifference to me end of chapter 12 recording by martin geeson in hazelmere surrey